said many people will say that they've tried streaming and while it's fine if you're doing it on your phone through car speakers and you're on the motorway, it's not the quality they're after at home when they're looking for quality listening. So how's streaming looking to you in 2022 and beyond? Well, any argument over quality uh, being inferior to uh, physical media pretty much ended... Uh, well, a couple of years ago now, um, there are at least four streaming ser- major streaming services, and then some some more specialist options beyond that, which uh, have been streaming in both CD quality, so 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, and now well beyond that, uh, in on-demand, available on a mobile or fi- fi- fixed platform and you know the quality is is absolutely sensational um there's this is by far and away the easiest way to access high resolution digital audio content Uh, you can buy it as physical downloads but um a a great many people have have no requirement to do so anymore Um, the other thing that's sort of important to stress about this is it's not just specialist noodly music for want of a better phrase that uh, is available in these in these uh, high resolution formats uh, if you have a look at new releases that come out every friday um, on all the streaming services you'll find that for the ones that do offer high resolution content um, a significant number of you know quite popular mainstream uh, new releases are available in some form of of high resolution there is there is a, a, a perfectly reasonable argument for quality in in every single music genre segment and you know it doesn't have to be things that you and eight other people have ever heard it's 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 a significant mainstream development yeah we're we're talking about millions of tracks aren't we now that are available at the highest audio quality um, that you can listen to and you would find it indistinguishable from any other form of quality audio listening. So do you want to name some services who do and uh, and maybe name any who don't? Uh, the, the first thing that's important, especially for anyone that then watches our the, the present the, the show later on in the afternoon about um, video streaming is all of the major streaming services, there's no exceptions to this, I can use, a, use a, an absolute. All of the major streaming services cover off m- mainstream content almost completely. Uh, all of the services talk about having millions of tracks. It's worth pointing out that um, that does involve repetition. So there will be, and I'm not making this up, I did check this on one occasion, there, there are sort of 350 versions of Happy Birthday to You on Spotify, and they all count as individual tracks, even though you'd have to be deranged to want to listen to them all. But nevertheless, the bulk of services do have the the sort of content that you would reasonably expect to find with one another you're not having to choose in for the most part there are a few, a few artists who don't appear on certain platforms for, for for reasons specific to themselves but across the overwhelming majority of mainstream content it's all available in the same place with this in mind uh, my favorite service um is the french well, uh, service cobuzz Uh, This has been uh, around for well over a decade now. Uh, Originally, it launched as a CD quality service, um, and then it went uh, and offered high resolution, um, gosh, well over over five years ago now. Um, This is uh, a happy combination of an excellent library. Uh, It has the, the vast majority of things you would reasonably expect to find it. It has a lot of high resolution content. It tells you what the high resolution content is and what format it and what sort of sample rate you should be expecting to see it. It then combines that with apps that are pleasant to use excellent integration onto uh, various products so you don't have to use any other equipment to get hold of uh, get get access to it Um, and the curated content playlists information and and, and another material that sort of helps you in your listening experience and tells you well if you enjoyed this you can try that Um, it's all extremely good Um, across all of these areas i would say that cobuzz continues to perform better than any other streaming service that's on the market. The other thing that's notable is that um, if you wish, like a number of other video streaming services and some other audio services, you can subscribe on an annual basis and make a saving over paying monthly, um, which may or may not be useful um, in the current climate. The one thing that Cobus can't easily do 
or at least it can't do without help from other companies' equipment, is stream direct from you holding a phone or an iPad and then go to, to a piece of uh, third-party equipment. You'd have to use Google Cast or AirPlay to do something along those lines. With this in mind, it's worth also pointing out that Tidal, the other streaming service which started as a lossless, uh, lossless service some years ago, um, Tidal is very similar to Cobuzz in so many regards. Um, it produces, it presents its high resolution um, audio in a format called MQA. We don't have enough time to get into the true who's and what's of MQA, but suffice to say, it's it counts as less accessible than Cobuzz. However, something that Tidal does do is that you can use a service called Tidal Connect. So you can have the app open on your phone or tablet. You press the Connect app. Uh, connect icon and so long as the piece of equipment that you have is Tidal Connect capable you can then just stream straight to your piece of equipment controlling it using the app on your phone it is extremely convenient it is extremely good and if you do have Tidal Connect on a piece of equipment it, it may make sense to notwithstanding I think that Cobuzz is still the better service Tidal does become more convenient in that sort of situation and I believe uh, if you're interested in sustainability MQA has sustainable credentials to boot as well um, so <laughs> so want to get on the website and have a have a little yeah. look about so to sum up then um, if we haven't really browsed different you know if we've been stuck in the same music streaming provider service for a while uh, some interesting stuff to browse there um any anything that that stands out to you in terms of specialist or cost or anything like that you said about the annual subscription at cobas for yes. example anything else like that we should look out for with the other providers well there is one other value calculation here that's um worth worth pointing out a third service which under specific circumstances represent excellent value for money is apple music um apple music is um not a universal choice they do not integrate very well with other people's hi-fi equipment it's not on their list of things to do um and if you're using a windows machine to access it it's dreadful and you don't get all of the bells and whistles if you have an iphone or an ipad however Apple Music is sensational. It works superbly well. Uh, it has access to high resolution content, the same as the uh, other two services I've been talking about. Uh, you can connect your iPad or phone to a number of pieces of Hive equipment directly and access it via that means. And it can be extremely cost effective. Uh, there are a number of extremely competitive deals um, doing the rounds for uh, Apple Music at the moment. So if you're on a tighter budget and you already have a smart iPhone or iPad device to hand, um, and that's all you intend to use the streaming service on, Apple Music could be uh, an excellent um, potential budget option. Excellent. Now we are out of time. However, we've got a question in from Murray, uh, which might be one for you to chew on and come back to later in the show or jump into the chat and answer later in the show. But he's asking about uh, whether you can download stuff um, and, and play it remotely on devices uh, on all the platforms. So I don't know if you can answer that one instantly or if it's one of yes, those I ones can, where I can you... do my best. Um, essentially almost all of the services there's always caveats but the ones I've been talking about will all allow you to store offline content on a phone or tablet uh, they're less keen on you doing it on a computer PC or Mac um, this can then be streamed to um, uh, other devices but that generally limits you to being done over airplay Bluetooth or by connecting headphones physically to that device if it if it allows it for the most part if we're talking about streaming to a third party piece of equipment you are not going to be able to do that with offline content it is going to be a live stream when you do that Ed, thank you very much for that music streaming update. Now, next, we'll be asking our experts to review some of the best streaming kit. And uh, Ed's one of those experts, so don't go away, Ed. Mm -hmm. 